Now, how about a test where the 10 questions were multiple choice having four choices, A, B, C, D? We'd like to look at the binomial distribution for that test and also consider what the probability is of passing a test with 10 multiple choice questions, four choices on each question, what is the probability of passing, again, if you guess on every question? We'll again go to the TI-83, and we'll select the Stat Edit menu. I'm going to clear the list that appeared in List 2 from the last question. Clear Enter and come up to list 2 again with the cursor. And we'll formulate list 2 here. List 1 we can leave alone because again there are 10 questions and these represent the events of getting 0 correct, 1 correct, 2 correct, and so forth all the way up to 10 correct. As we did in the previous problem, the L2 will be formulated by taking 100 and multiplying again by the binomial probability density function that's under distribution and it's number zero and here we have the binomial probability density function again the number of questions on the test is 10 however now the probability of getting any one correct by just guessing is not a half but instead a quarter or 0.25 and then the third entry is the second function L1 and we'll hit enter and here are my probabilities they start with approximately 5.6 percent and go up the probability of guessing on all 10 and getting none correct is almost 6 percent the probability of only getting one correct is almost 19 percent if we want to see the graph of this histogram for this distribution, all we need to do now is simply hit the graph button because we're going to keep the same settings to the window, that is to say the minimum x at negative 0.5 and the scale at 1, and we'll just simply hit the graph key. And here is our binomial probability density function for this particular problem. If we hit the trace key, we see that for the first class, again where the lower boundary was negative 0.5 and the upper boundary was 0.5, that's zero. The event of getting none correct has a percentage probability of approximately 5.6%. Using the arrow to the right, we can look at the probability of getting 1 correct, 2 correct, 3 correct, 4 correct, 5 correct. Remember, we're interested in the probability of passing, and that's the probability of getting not 6, but 7 correct, or 8, or 9, or 10. And you can see that these probabilities are very small. This particular number is 9.5 times 10 to the negative, and this would be approximately negative 4. We can see that on the stat enter list editor, and if we scroll down to the bottom of list 10, of list 2 rather, to the probability of getting all 10 correct, we have 9.5 and change times 10 to the negative fifth. That E negative 5 means times 10 to the negative fifth. We're talking about scientific notation. So if we're considering what the probability is of passing in this situation, our probability is going to be only 0.35 of 1%. In other words, not even one half of 1%.
Again, that's the probability of getting 7 correct, or 8 correct, or 9 correct, or 10 correct. The probability of passing the sum of all those probabilities. So there's going to be approximately a 99.6% chance that you'll fail if you guess on all 10 problems. To look at a similar problem where we have 10 questions, multiple choice, where instead of each question having four questions, but instead has five questions, we're going to graph that binomial distribution and again ask what is the probability of passing if you guess on every question. So we'll call up the TI-83 and calling up the TI-83 we'll again go to list 2 and go to the very top of the list with the cursor on the title for list 2 we'll hit clear and then enter to clear that list. Again, we'll move back up to the title for list 2, and we'll formulate list 2 by putting in 100 times. And again, the 100 is because the probabilities would be decimals. Multiplying by 100 enables us to graph the histogram. Again, we're going to use under the distribution key, second function distribution, the binomial probability density function, which is number zero, the number of questions in the test, which is the first entry in the syntax, is zero, followed by a comma. If there are five questions, that means the probability of randomly selecting the correct answer is 20% or 0.2. And then, as we did in other problems, we'll follow this with the second function L1 and hit enter. We get a little busy signal and here are our probabilities. And we see in this case the probability of getting all of them wrong is almost 11%. The probability of getting only one correct is almost 27%. The probability of getting only two correct 30% and so forth. To see what this graph looks like, we'll just hit the graph key. And the trace gives us the probability of getting none correct, approximately 10.7%. The probability of getting only one correct, approximately 26.8%. Probability of getting two correct, approximately 30.2%, and so forth. And again, we're interested in the probability of passing. This is the probability of getting 5 correct. That would be a 50 on the exam. Here would be 6 correct. This is a 60. Here's the probability of getting 7 correct. And this is not a decimal representation of a percent. This is a percent. This is 0.07%, not even one-tenth of 1%. One and if we continue, the probability of getting 8 correct, 0.007%, and so forth. And here, now, for getting 9 correct, we're getting into negative exponents, and the same thing here for number 10. If we considered what that probability would be for passing, the answer is as follows. The probability of passing is approximately 0.09%. In other words, not even one-tenth of one percent. So if you have a 10-question test, all multiple choice with five choices on each, and you decide to try to pass by guessing, the likelihood of your passing will be less than one-tenth of one percent. That is to say, the likelihood of your failing is going to be 99.9 percent or more.